What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. I'm back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So uh, I don't have a whole lot of time to make a video today, so in today's video we're just going to go through SketchUp styles and how to create a blueprint style within the style manager. So this video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. Um, SketchUp Essentials course is, the SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to give a start to finish training for SketchUp. So if you want to learn how to use SketchUp, um, that's basically the equivalent of a two-day in person course um, that you have lifetime access to. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to learn more about photorealistic rendering, creating drawings for layout, the tools in SketchUp, make sure to check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this model is a model from the Placemaker Building Bundle. So this is one of the models that you get when you purchase Placemaker, or you can uh, purchase the bundle separately as well. So um, if you guys are interested in more information about that, um, make sure you check out the link down below at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash Placemaker. So this model is basically a model of the Convention Center in Denver. And uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to come in here and I wanted to create my own blueprint style. Now a lot of you know if you go into the Styles section of your tray, in SketchUp, there's a section in here for assorted styles, and there's actually a blueprint style already built in. And I think this blueprint style is fine. We could also come in and adjust this, and I may show you how to do that as well. But I wanted to show you how to create one of these from scratch, because once you have an idea of the way that that works, then uh, you can create a lot more styles and kind of customize everything. And so if you remember, what the styles do is they allow us to adjust everything from the face colors to the background to the way our lines look look in SketchUp. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to turn my sky off. So I'm going to go into a style and it doesn't matter which one you have selected initially because we're going to save it as a new style. But you're just going to go into the edit tab and you're going to make some changes. So we're going to start off and go to the background settings box which is the middle box. And we're just going to come in here and we're going to adjust the color of our image. So you can see how you can adjust this with this slider. And you can kind of mess around with this until you get the look that you want. Um, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and leave this as is. We have our background in here is kind of a blue. I may move this a little bit more towards the center of my uh, color wheel, maybe darken this down a little bit. And so now that we've adjusted our background, we're going to come in here and we're going to adjust our face settings. And so what we want to do in this case is we're going to go ahead and we're going to adjust this to display shaded using all same. And you can see how right now some of these faces are the gray back color and some of them are the white color. Well we're going to come in here and we're going to adjust both of those to a blue. So and we'll get it somewhat close to what our image was before and the other thing you can do is you can take note of the um, RGB values of the color that you pick. So in this case I'll use the screen capture tool or the snipping tool And you can kind of save a copy of that off to the side. And then you can just go in and you can go to your back color and you can just pull those values in. So 52, 68, 255. That way you can make sure all of those are the same color. And so you can see how I was able to come in here and I was able to make my faces a blue color and I was able to make my background a blue color. Well now this doesn't look as good because you can't really see your edges. And so what we want to do is we want to change the color of our edges. And so to do that you can just come over to your edge settings and down at the bottom it has an option for color all same. And right now that's making all of your edges in this black color. Well if you click on this and you go in, we'll go back to our color wheel, and you select like a white, what that's gonna do is that's gonna make all of your edges white instead of black. And you could make these whatever color you want. You could make them red, you could do whatever you want with these. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the complete white color. So now I have a blueprint style image that has white edges and we're going to make a couple other changes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the box for extensions and we're going to change this to something like 10. And so you can see how if I change this to something like 10 I get more extension off the edges where uh, lines intersect in here. And so there's a couple other things you could do depending on how uh, smooth you want these lines to be. You could turn jitter on. In this case I don't think it looks very good but jitter kind of adds a hand drawn effect to this. And you could also turn on your back edges if you wanted these to show up as kind of guides or something like that. 
And so we're also going to come into our style and we're going to turn the option for model axes off. So that way the axes aren't showing up in the background. And you can come in here and you can fool around with this. Like if you wanted this to be maybe a darker color or something like that, you could also make this match. So if you wanted to, you could type in the same RGB values that we had in your color picker. So 52, 68, 255. That way this would be the same color as your edges right here. And you'll notice right now we're getting some darker and some lighter. That's because our shadows are on and you can play around with that if you want to and you can see if you want the shadows on or off. So in this case, you can kind of mess around with these settings. I kind of like leaving it on at this point. And the other thing I want to note is you can actually adjust the thickness of your lines by adjusting your edge settings. So profiles is going to be your pro your edges that are kind of around the border of this object. So if I was to change this to 10, just so you could see it, you could see how these are your profile edges. So you could use that to adjust the thickness of those edges. Then you could also adjust the depth cue if you wanted to. So you could come in here and you could set your profile edges to a thicker line and then your depth cue to a non thicker line. You could also adjust those so those are the same. But you can see how by adjusting those edge settings, you can adjust how thick your lines are. So that gives you more options for what you can do with this. So and then you could also come in here and you can use like an overlay to kind of roughen this up. So I'm going to pull a canvas texture overlay that I've downloaded and I will link to this in the notes down below. It's noted as free to use so you can download it and use this. But you're just going to come into the watermark section. You go to edit watermark settings and you can actually add a texture overlay as a watermark. And so what you would do is you would bring this in as a watermark and you'd set this as overlay. And then you click next and what you would do is you would come in here and set this as create mask because you can see how otherwise it doesn't colorize in here, right? So if you check the box for create mask and then you kind of drag your uh, drag your blend off to the right a little bit, then that'll kind of mask over this while still maintaining the colors. And then I can click next. And then in this case, you could either use the option for stretch to fit fit the screen and turn off lock aspect ratio. You could also tile this and adjust the scale depending on what you're looking for. So you can see how when I drag the scale up, I probably don't want it to be too much smaller than this because you can see the joints where it's tiling it. But if I kind of run that scale up and you only see the joint once, it kind of looks natural. So you can use either one of those options and then you can click finish and what you have is you have this blueprint style and you can see how it's got a little bit of this rough texture in here as well. And then one other thing to note is you could also save this style. So in this case what you could do is you could just click the plus button once you're done making your changes and you could just name this something like blueprint style custom or something like that, hit the enter key, you can see how this pair of arrows pops up. This means you can save these changes to this style. So you can just click on this and then this will show up as blueprint style custom. If you wanted to, you could right click on this and do a save as and save this in your styles folder for future use as well. So that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. I wanted to give you kind of a quick overview of just how to create your own style. In this case, the blueprint style I think is a great example. But leave a comment below. Let me know how you're using styles, if you're using them. I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.